Hey guys, it's Jared from Backwoods Animation and welcome to part one of our character rigging tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about designing a character. What do I do in order to get a character ready to be rigged? How do I lay it out and how do I build it? Um, so stay tuned and we're going to get into that and let's see what we come up with. So this is a sketch of the character we're going to be rigging today. I always start with a sketch and then we start by making a composition. This composition is going to be fairly large at 4000 by 2250. Um, and you can leave it at 2997 and do a duration of however long you feel, at least 30 seconds. And I make my composition very large because we're using the puppet pen tool. And when you use that, you can't scale your character up. So you want to have a large character so that it's um, big enough to fit in any size composition. So now I'll turn on the grid and I'm going to try to center this picture so that it's as close to the middle as possible. Obviously, when you do a sketch, your proportions aren't accurate and your, you know, your your center line just won't be perfect, but you want to get it as close as possible. And then this is where I'm going to start building out my character. I'm going to speed this section up because it's just too long and too time consuming to explain. <clears throat> if you don't know how to actually create any of these shapes, watch a tutorial or maybe I can do one for you. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. You just make the character as you need and when dealing with joints, um, I like everything to be done with circles. So the bottom, we'll say the, the bottom of, or we'll say the elbow of the arm should have concentric circles overlapping so that when you rotate the lower portion of the arm, um, you don't see the elbow break. And so everything's straightforward. Just make sure that you label every layer accurately. So head, head, um, upper arm, lower arm, upper leg, lower leg. And it's really just straightforward as creating all these shapes. Um, just make sure everything that's going to be moving is separate. So, you know, if, if you have one solid leg, but you want it to bend, make sure that it's separated into two layers. So you have an upper leg and lower leg. And the same with the arm. So now I'm going to slow it down here because I'm going to be making the hand. So the hand is a little bit more tricky. Um, so I start with a circle so that when the hand rotates, you don't see it break and you want the rotation of that hand to be right in the center. And I'm starting to parent everything together. So the hand parents to the lower arm and the lower arm parents to the upper arm. Now, using my sketch, I solo out just the, the sketched artwork in the hand that I'm going to be creating. And um, basically, I'm going to do a palm. So we can think about it this way. The circle is the wrist portion. And now I'm creating the palm portion where the fingers will attach to. And once you have it looking kind of how you want it, then I'm going to go into actually creating the fingers. And for the hand, you can do everything on the same layer. That's okay. Because it's all going to be uh, manipulated on one shape layer. For the fingers, I do one solid shape layer, just a stroke. And then I adjust the stroke size to be about the width of one finger. And I'll scale it up to match my artwork. Uh, maybe about... We'll scale it to about 40. And once you have the sizing, you can start to manipulate that finger in any way you like. And I'm going to come through here and I'm going to change a few things to the finger. I'll move it over. And then you want, you want this to become a round cap so that it's nice and round it at the tips. And you can just get that finger to whatever size you want. And this is gonna take a lot of finesse 
getting the hand to look right. And the next thing I'll do is I'll change um, the color to match my skin tone. And then once you have it looking right, you'll, you'll label it to be whatever you want and then to duplicate that layer and pull it down below. So now you have two of the same exact um, strokes, but for the bottom stroke, you're gonna parent that path to the path of the top stroke. And then we can change the color to black and just increase. So now you have a nice stroke around your finger, but all you have to do is manipulate one path and it, the other one will follow. Um, and if that didn't make sense, I'll, I'll do it again with another finger. So with the bottom finger, select your bottom stroke and then we're gonna add a trim paths to it. And then from here, you can start to, oops, wrong one. You can start to pull in the bottom stroke so that it masks out um, where the finger starts. So now you have a seamless finger and all you have to do is manipulate one. So I'll select these two and then I'll duplicate them I'll pull them below my first pointer finger, and I'm just gonna speed this up. So basically, once you have your first finger done, you just duplicate it five or four more times, and you have a hand, and it's really that simple. And you just position it exactly how you want, and you pose it out. Um, now, for the hips, we have this solid line going through. If your character doesn't have a stroke, you don't have to worry about any of this, and it makes creating your shape layer so much easier. But for the pants or for the hips, because I have a stroke, I don't want that stroke to be fully connected all the way from the top of the hips to the center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that stroke off and then I'm gonna start to put in my own kind of seg segmented strokes so that we have a stroke on the outside of the pants and I want it to stop right around where the leg um, and the hip intersect. So right around there. There we go. Now, I don't need a fill. So I'll select my shape, my new shape. I'll get rid of the fill, and I'll increase my stroke to eight so that it matches the rest. Now I can put in another stroke right here around the crotch area and it's gonna intersect with each leg just a little bit. And I'll move it down to, uh, to match the bottom there. All right, and then I'm gonna do a round cap and a round joint. And I try to do that for all, all of my strokes. You want a round cap and a round joint. That just gives that smooth, clean look. Now I'll create another stroke line on the opposite side. All right, that looks pretty good. We'll move it into match. And I'll do the same thing with a round cap and a round joint. All right, so our character is coming together. We have all our pieces. We've got this leg ro rotation. And you can see it starts to break um, down there at the bottom. We lose our stroke. That's gonna take a little more finesse and I have a solution for it, but I'll get into that in the rigging portion. I'll dive deeper into that. Um, and I'll also dive into how the legs can either come forward in Z space or go backward in Z space so that they are either on top of the body or behind the body. I'll talk more about that later, but as for now, this is the design portion and it's looking pretty good. Our design's coming together. There's a few things I have to address like the neck and the collar line <clears throat> about masking that off. Um, but for now, I think that this is, is you know, good enough. 
Now with the hand, I'm just going to copy. <clears throat> I'm going to copy this hand and duplicate it to the other side, just so we can see what it looks like. Um, but one thing you have to remember, you do not want anything to be scaled negative. When you do a negative scaling and you try to attach your, your Duic system to it, it kind of throws things out of whack. So with me doing this negative scale on the hand, it's only temporary just to see what it will look like. I'm not actually going to keep it this way. Um, so it's just a placeholder for now so we can see exactly what our character looks like. And all in all, it's looking really good. There might be some things I want to change with like a little tinkering of the, the face shape. Um, I'll fix that. And then the feet, the feet are something I have to work on too. How are the feet going to function when they animate? And I'll get into that later. Um, but for now, this is the design portion. I hope you guys liked it. Feel free to comment and let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.